Hey everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. You're still rocking and rolling there in San Ramon. There's been three earthquakes within the last 24 hours. Magnitude 2.2, which was only 4.9 miles in depth. 3.0. Now that one was 5.2 miles in depth and a 1.6. 25 earthquakes within the last week, the largest being two, magnitude 3.0s. These earthquakes have been ongoing for about two months, but in the last month, and that's as far back as USGS goes, there's been 136. The largest being a magnitude 3.6, which was six miles in depth, and I believe there was also a 3.8, which I don't see listed on here. Maybe it was older than that, or it was revised. In the past two months, those in San Ramon have been repeatedly jolted awake uh, from all these earthquakes. The recent 3.0, over 269 people sent in reports saying that they felt it to USGS Did you fill out website. Here's the felt page on USGS. Stick with me. I'm going to dive more into what's going on there in San Ramon along the Calaveras Fault Zone. Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you very much for joining me. It is Wednesday, December 17th, and I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. All the people that evidently watch my videos from around the world, on my video that I posted yesterday about the crime there, um, I actually had a comment from one person who lives in France. Welcome. I want to give a shout out to those that support my work, one being Yolanda, who lives in Spain. Thank you, Yolanda. Also to Marty and Mura for their cups of coffee. Yeah, it's early, so I'm working on my first cup. And for PayPal donations, thank you very much. I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas and a safe holiday that's coming up. God bless you all, and thank you again for joining me. I'm also on Patreon. You can watch my videos for free over there. If you don't want to watch here on YouTube, you can jump over to Patreon. And I humbly ask that you subscribe. I am sure a lot more people felt this earthquake. They're very common of late. Yeah, the last two months. The part of this report to the east uh, looks like it came from Stockton. Uh, it was given an intensity level of 2. That was about 34 miles or 56 kilometers. Uh, to the south, the farthest report, intensity level 2, which is about 28 miles by San Jose or 45 kilometers. Up there by Marin, it was felt. Um, let's see here. Intensity level 2, 55 kilometers, which would be about 34 miles or 55 kilometers. Since early November, there's been nearly 150 small earthquakes, mostly a magnitude 1 to a 3.8. Okay, where's that 3.8 at? Right there. I don't have all the earthquakes listed. That was on November 9th. I saved the link to that page, and here it says we're having trouble finding that data. Um, it gives the location for all that. And the depth, even the depth. So why has it been removed? Yeah, very odd. There was also a magnitude 3.1 on December 16th. That one struck just before dawn, sending brief rolling motion that was reportedly felt through homes in San Ramon, Danville, Dublin, and Pleasanton. Uh, no damage or injuries have been reported, but I'm sure they had a lot of things that knocked over off the shelves or maybe even came out of cupboards. These earthquakes have been clustering along the northern part of the Calaveras Fault Zone, which I got drawn out in red here. It is a major right lateral strike-slip fault that stretches over 100 miles through the East Bay. Geologists classify this as a classic earthquake swarm, a series of similarly sized tremors without a clear main shock uh, driven by the faults probably pressure tension that has built up similar swarms hit the same area in 1970 
2002, 2003, 2015, and 2018. None of, none of those ever resulted in a large event. Yet while the current swarm is benign, it underscores the broader seismic threat lurking beneath the densely populated area. The interconnected Hayward and Calvers, Calaveras, oh, I'm tongue-tied here, more copy, Calaveras Fault System. So bringing this out, the Cal Calaveras Fault actually connects um, to the Hayward Fault deep under the ground. This is an area of slow creep. The slow creep does not fully offset the plate's motion, which is supposed to be about 15 to 20 millimeters a year across the system. Um, the deeper locked sections accumulate um, what they call a slip defect, um, building stress for future quakes. The Hayward Fault last major eruption was in 1868 which was a magnitude 6.9. And uh, with the 150 years has elapsed since that earthquake. Geologists say that there is a 33% chance of a magnitude 6.7 event along the Hayward and Roger Creek Fault by 2043. That's this one drawn out here in red. Yeah, it's hard to believe that these two faults very deep under the ground are connected to each other. You have the Hayward Fault and the Calaveras Fault. There's the location for the uh, um, 1868 earthquake, which was a magnitude 6.7 right there. Now, while mainstream media and geologists say that this recent earthquake swarm is not a precursor for a big one, it does highlight the ongoing tension that has built up. And USGS ex experts note such activity is a timely reminder to secure your furniture, stock emergency kits, and retrofit homes. In a region that is home to over 7 million people, preparation isn't an option. It's essential. So what have you done to prepare for a large earthquake? Yeah, they are overdue for a large earthquake. And it's been 157 years since the last one. And is considered overdue. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your support. I humbly ask that you subscribe. If not here on YouTube, then on Patreon. Always be prepared for a disaster. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless y'all.